Afa Day, and welcome to Coffee with the Candidates. This series was created to educate and inform Guam's voting population on the positions candidates running for office take on some of the island's most controversial topics. This episode kicks off the first of four gubernatorial interviews. Each of these remaining four episodes will feature the lieutenant governor candidate and the gubernatorial candidate. In this episode, the Democratic team of Gutierrez and Bordalio will be featured. Stay right there. You won't want to miss this one. Welcome to Coffee with Candidates. I'm Patty Arroyo. Today we're going to be speaking with the Gutierrez Berdalio team. And first up is the Lieutenant Governor candidate, Fred Berdalio. All right, Patty. Hi, Fred. How are you? All right, good, good, very uh, good. It's 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 good to see you in a position uh, on the campaign trail in a, in. I, I'm, I'm going to say unfamiliar territory because although you come from the police department and you have great knowledge of uh, the you know historical facts and data of fighting crime on Guam, uh, that was your platform for when you ran as a senatorial candidate. But this is a bigger apple here. Yes. You, there, you have to be fully abreast of every issue uh, that affects your constituents, and yeah. uh, so you know relying on what you know best. Uh, is, it is part of the crutch, but it isn't everything. I no. think you're probably finding that out on the campaign trail. Well, at the center of uh, the issues that I think on the forefront of uh, this campaign, especially when it's a four-way race in the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. I think the real issue is about just who could you trust to be the governor, lieutenant governor, for your next four years with the issues that were challenged with Patty. And, one of the issues I ran in in 2016 when I was uh, running for senator is what good government is, you know, what defines what good government is. And uh, it is really making sure that you're accessible to the people, you, you take care of the uh, essential important issues like what's happening at the hospital, what's happening with public safety, what's happening with the education, the core areas of, of the government. I studied this when I was at the University of Guam in, uh, with, mm. in public administration, and, and I studied about the kind of uh, leadership that's needed, you know, and, and, and some of that has to really do with relationships. And I think that's, well, what, I think that's what capitalizes the strength of uh, a Guterres Berdalio team. Th let's talk about yeah. that. Th let's talk about the relationship. You are a relative, uh, relatively young sort of whippersnapper uh, to the very experienced politician uh, and personality yes. of the uh, former Governor Carl Gutierrez. Have you learned anything uh, from this sort of master of, the, of politics and campaigns than you'd known before in just your own personal experiences running for office? Um, well, you know, some of the things I think that uh, is, I'm really picking up on and really is, uh, you know, insightful in, in being part of the Gutierrez Berdalio team and looking how the governor and his network, everything is about, you know, building that network and, uh, and there's so many people have come up to the governor and said, I remember how you helped, uh, you know, uh, with our situation, whether it was a medical fundraising, mm -hmm. whether it was a situation in infrastructure, uh, despite all the challenges that happened during the first Gut Guterres Berdalio administration. And some of the things I'm learning, of course, some of the things that uh, I'm picking up on is it's very important to be responsive, you know, what you, do, you don't wait days or even months, you have to really be responsive. And I think that's the biggest plus uh, that, uh, you know, I learned that in the police department, you have to be responsive. If you, if you don't, there's complaints made against you. Mm. And that's why I think the important thing is, uh, and the biggest thing out of making it more powerful about people coming to trust us, is they know that, that they, we can return a phone call, we can actually be present when uh, there's a situation, there's a problem that needs to be addressed, that we're responsive. And that, that's yeah. what you get, that's the, some, the most important, you know, aspect of what I could see from the supporters that are around our headquarters and people doing out of love, not because there's something to gain and, you know, they're expecting a job, you know, there's no job expectations because they believe and they know that the governor and I are committed, you know, uh, and, and there's no, nothing in return on that. The expectation that you come from where you come from in law enforcement, are you finding as you're out there campaigning that 
more and more people have something to say about their uh, confidence and the safety and security of, of people on Guam with, with the crime rates, the crime rate where it is? It is an issue. Public safety is an issue. What's really come up to the forefront are also what's the ethics, you know, what's of, of our leaders right now. It's always been an issue that's pushed forward. Why hasn't that ethics commission been, uh, you know, uh, uh, impaneled? You know, uh, the ethics commission or yeah. the police commission? We Ethic, also, the ethics commission, yeah, the ethics you know, commission, because because a, of polit, you know, every political leader mm. is required to go through a particular ethics course, okay, right? Okay. And that is at the forefront because there are individuals in leadership positions in this administration that uh, you know, of course, you know, there's questionable about uh, some of the decisions that they've made, and they're, and uh, you know, coming from the um, you know, I'll give you an example, the Chamorro Land Trust, you know and the situation at the hospital, and the situation at Gura, there's questions and so about there's a lack ethics. Of, there's a lack of confidence, but do you find that there's a lack of confidence in the police force? Do you think that that is gonna be an, a, a big it, issue it, for it, you to it, tackle? It's an also an issue too about what's, how uh, politics has entered into the Guam Police Department. You know, when I was chief of police, Patty, I've never uh, led a, a mortar Kate escort for a political party. I've never sat on a tent uh, during an election, you know, to count how many votes are coming in because I separate myself. Although I was a, a governor's appointee, I knew my role as the head of the Guam Police you mean Department as a is to make sure that the polling sites are protected. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Were you saying then that you, you've, never been, you've never done that as a law enforcement officer? I've never uh, done like, that as a law enforcement. Uh, are they made to be doing that now? Is, is that well, what you're what Well, you're current, current leadership right now, uh, you know, has been known to be at the tent of the, of the uh, political party counting the votes for Jotnia or leading a motorcade. These are, that, you're talking about ex executive security detail or something like that? No, actually, I'm talking about the chief of police. Oh, at the right chief now. of police. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So, well, you know what it's like to be a chief of police. Yes. Uh, and, it's, and it's hard not to look at the situation now, and that's predominantly the situation uh, with you, one of the top contenders for this on the Republican Party, at least we say I have to mention it. But a, a police but officer. A, you're, you're talking about the issue. lieutenant governor who, lieutenant 20 governor. years ago, he was a police officer. Right. That was 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and I know that incident right now is, um, you know, has a little bit of raising questions in his campaign. But you know, our campaign is focused on what Governor Gutierrez and I can uh, do in the next four years. And uh, really, we're, we're, we're taking the high road in really focusing what's really the issues about the basic necessities of what the, the people are coming up to us for about affordable uh, uh, health care, about making sure the hospital is taken care of, about uh, making sure their streets are safe, the pedestrian accidents, about the drug situation on our island, and also at the same time, making sure that pe our, our children and our youth have an, have an opportunity for a good education and then have an opportunity for a job when they graduate from college because there are a lot of college graduates right now and the workplace. Yeah. What know? will be your biggest role in, in your administration? You know, my biggest role besides, uh, how, you know, it's always been themed that the Lieutenant Governor takes care of the Guam seal and also beautification, but it's more than that. I think my role, um, which I'm going to push for and, and I, my partner with, with the governor, is making sure all the cabinet members, right, um, you know, look at their workforce, get some workforce training and learning, you know, that takes place so we can develop our government and Guam workforce so that they can appreciate that they're working for the people. They can partner up and be a little bit more innovative in, in uh, making sure that they can uh, be efficient with their work. That's going to be part of my role. Uh, also part of my role is, also, is to look at grants, the state clearinghouse, mm. making sure that we can manage the grants and make sure we can get a little bit more revenues coming in. And well, the effort the to just develop the, the workforce uh, the, the workforce is, is largely dependent on how the federal government will ease these restrictions on some of these foreign workers. You know, we've been down this road where we've been trying to entice local people to take on these jobs that they otherwise are filled with people who are coming up from the FSM. Uh, some of our local people just don't want to do these jobs. Yeah, you know when they say that uh, uh, unemployment is down, it's not really the quantity of jobs, it's the quality of jobs. And that's both in the private sector and the uh, government sector, the mm -hmm. public sector. I think our, our plans, the governor and I, is that 
with the government of Guam, if we can be able to invest in our people, because they're the biggest assets. My emphasis on my studies in human relations is in human resource management. I think I'm the only lieutenant governor candidate that has that sort of expertise and experience and work training, right? And if you invest in your workforce, if you invest in government of Guam in, in, in a broad uh, program that gives them an opportunity to uh, have uh, supplemental uh, uh, financial aid for going to the community college or even vocational work there, then you get a little bit of bigger value from the workforce. And at the same time too, the private sector has an interest in coming in and, and helping out and being a partner with that. And they have an interest too in developing their people in the private sector. Government could be able to do that. And, but for us to do that, one of the biggest uh, things we need to do is cut the bureaucratic red tape mm. so that we can allow the private sector to expand in their job training for their employees and then give is them there, that those wages will go up, you know, because of the value of the Is there room for the, the, the other kind of e-technology? I mean, we are coming upon an age where a lot of these old-fashioned jobs are being replaced by machines. Yes, and you know, now that you say that, you know, Governor Guterres started the data processing center for the government of Guam. So he sees the evolution of that to today. We can certainly do better in the improvement of making sure there's connectivity. My wife, uh, is a computer teacher. She wants to see that there's still a digital divide among our, our, our local community. She wants to see more connectivity. She wants to see more of that. But at the same time, we know that the price of that information technology is we may be at the cost of that is real communications because the real communications isn't through emailing each other or talking via phone but it's actually one-to-one. -one. That's the biggest Yeah, asset that's the old-fashioned way, but it's yeah. also the newfangled way that'll get us to where we got to go. Yes. Fred, it's always a pleasure, my man. Thank All you right. so much for joining us. All right, thank good you, luck Patty. to you on the campaign trail. All right, thank you, And Patty. we'll look forward to the primary. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's a very big deal. We are gonna come back with Governor Carl Gutierrez next on Coffee with the Candidates. We'll be right back. Welcome to Coffee with the Candidates, and now the other half of the Gutierrez Berdalio team, uh, Governor Gutierrez. How are you? Good morning, Good Patty. I'm well. Thank you. I'm so glad that uh, we have an opportunity to go face to face. I've been here with you. Yes, yes, <laughs> many times. Many times, and uh, you know uh, this this. Coffee with the candidates. Yeah. I think I was listening to Fred, and um, you asked some real good questions and perfect responses. I'm, I'm, I don't know who's you know older at this, me or you, because I don't know how many times I've interviewed you over <laughs> uh, the span of my career and the span mm -hmm. of your uh, political career. Uh, we were playing a song on the radio called I'm Still Standing by Elton John, and I got uh, a message from your son-in-law who says that this is sort of your theme. Yeah, the yeah. I'm Still Standing. Oh. There's, there's something about, there's something about <laughs> a guy who's got the kind of staying power that you have. Uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's my island, and uh, I grew up here, and I grew up in, in several eras, you know, from before the war, during the war, after the war, and then the transition into where we're at right now. So I, I, I see the erosions of our, our culture. I see the, the good and the bad. And uh, I just didn't want to count myself out because I have four grand, grandchildren, I've got children, and I, I just don't want to leave this earth uh, with the Guam that I remember and, and love. And that's why when Fred and I were talking about what our theme was after we speak with people out there, and then it just dawned on us that what we're really striving for is to make Guam, Guam again. Bring back the, the, the soul of Guam. Because if you look around and you feel around and you see what's happening, people believe that, uh, that, that we've lost our soul. I mean, when you have people sleeping on the streets, homeless people, and most of them are veterans, and, and nobody is coming out there, not, not, not from, the, from a staff to take a, a census, but the governor, the lieutenant governor, the first lady, the second lady, and go and look at these people and give them hope, lift them up, because that's how we, we grew up here on this island. We help one another. And I, I, I just don't see that. They're, they're just aloof about the whole situation. They lock themselves up at Adeloup, where nobody can get to them. 
And, and it's never been like that with me and, and, and Jerry Gutierrez. We go out and search out the people, make it easy for them to tell us their problems, no matter how small it may be to you, but it's the biggest problem they have. And that it demands attention and that as a real Magalahi, you have to be in the public square, standing out there, people coming to you, feeling you, touching you, telling them, telling you what they need and you must attend to it if you can. What? So that's, that's, that's what yeah. we're bringing back to this island. And I'm bringing back ex also the experience that I have. When I was being interviewed by the Chamber of Commerce, uh, you know, and somebody was writing in on the interactive thing. Stop telling the people what you did in the past as governor. I said, well, I'm being interviewed. Don't you want the best? When you ask me about extricating ourselves from, from a financial mess, we did it back there, and here's how we did it. We brought in the business community. They became empowered, and they just not as a perfunctory kind of, a, of an advisory council. We empowered them. And that's how we, we, we put together a vision, 2001, that gave us goals. We showed the people where we're heading. And if you want to follow us, this is where we're going to go. First step, second step, third step. Look at Pleasure Island. That came from the Bob Co. being part of the empowered community and the Israels and how we managed to put that, that world stage there at Pleasure Island. It wasn't just because I thought of it or, or sat back there and let it happen. No, we drove it. We drove the number of airlines coming in. We drove the number of hotels that would be built to provide for a sustainable economy. But it didn't happen just because uh, I'm sitting there and taking the ceremonial part of being governor. I was never about that. I'm talking about working. How do you balance then that old school ideal that you have while still trying to keep up with the new school? Your grandsons are growing up in an age where a lot of the equipment and instruments that we used back in 1998 have been replaced by cool, smart technology. You have to be able to address. Uh, well, well these and young you know, boys it's, it know doesn't that. come with the, with a negative part of that. And uh, I'm just afraid, and I, I keep warning my children that you know you're going to get addicted to this thing where where you just don't have any growth in reality by your st st staying in front of that uh, whatever contraption <laughs> you have. Mm -hmm. But that's good in in moving forward and learning. But it, but it takes away from your own personality and your own soul, so but parents... Then, but then you run the risk, you ever get that, oh, you're just so old school that you're dismissed as just being a chapter in a life. Uh, and, and so just trying to find that blend or that balance. I mean, clearly, you know, you have a younger, not, much, not by much, but you do have a younger running mate this time. Yeah. Uh, Madeline Berdalio was more of a peer to you than yes. Fred Berdalio uh, has yeah. become, but now... You know, you, you, there is a balance, and I, I don't well, know Well, the, the balance is, and, you know, and, and we depend also on the parents to do the balancing act as the kids uh, are growing up, and, and even the schools are doing that as well. Mm. But, but you're right, I mean, th that we have this newfangled technology. When I came to, gov to the government of Guam in, in December 1965, out of the Air Force, I was hired by Joe T. San Augustine who was the director of finance and taxation, I think it was called at that time, now the administration, and asked me if, you know, to work as a programmer. And I, I signed up as a programmer, but with no data processing center. Mm -hmm. I was expected to do it. So I, I did that and it transitioned to where we're at now, brought it into the data processing and into the electronic age. But, but it's, it's, it's there for somebody to be able to, to lead. And um, I, I keep going back to the leadership part. You cannot be a steward uh, for the government as governor. You've got to take lead role. Show the people where you're heading. Bring in the community to give you the ideas of how they want this island to move forward. It can't be just between me and Fred mm. coming up with it. We don't have all the answers. But when I called in all those CEOs, the MBAs, uh, from the biggest corporations, I brought in the community, the clergy, the Department of Education, and we all sat there. And every time we sit down and talk about one particular uh, movement forward, we all contributed. And they were all working for free for the government of Guam. We're going to do that again. It's the empowerment of the community to help us get ourselves forward. And they know where you're heading because they're part of it and they're easily to, to follow. And so we're going to provide that kind of leadership. But more importantly, I know I've traversed this, this, this landscape in the, the political government, 
and I know where all the pitfalls are and, and, and all the blazes I've put on trees, but more importantly, I know where the resources are. I don't have to go and rediscover them and go back and look where the, where, where the overgrowth is. I know, I know how to do it and I wanna do it from day one. Somebody said do it on day two because we're gonna celebrate on day one. <laughs> but I know where to go to and where to find the resources. And I, I chuckle when I said, the others are just still fishing in their swimming pool. Mm -hmm. You gotta go across the big pond, this big ocean and go to Washington DC. That's where the resources are. Set up your network with people, have a, have a personal relationship with the powers that be. That's what I did during the Clinton-Gore administration, and that's how we got the resources coming to Guam, because of that relationship. I'm worried also about some of our societal issues. We, we still don't have adequate and affordable housing for people. We still are working with, uh, you know, more and more people slipping into poverty. Uh, we have FSM migrants that are trying to find a new life uh, in Guam. We still have these issues with drugs and violence. Uh, those are the community issues that are so graspable. Well, you know, um, when I was governor, I had $366 million budget. When Joe Adda was in there before me, he, he had up to $566 million. But, you know, the, 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 the Asia economic bubble burst, and we had, the, you know, the typhoons, and we had earthquakes. We had SRF, BRAC 93, BRAC 95, NAS closing down. We dropped $200 million in, in our revenues. But we never let the customs and quarantine go under man. We had full complements there. We had full complements in the police department. So when you take away, you know, that, that full complement to guard our borders, the first entry to interdict drugs uh, and other uh, contrabands and for terrorists, whatever it is, that, that's a problem. So, you know, I know that this administration bragged that, hey, we went from four, 366 million to eight, 900 million is our budget now. We grew the economy. Then why are you 114 uh, customs officers short? Why are you 48 police uh, officers short? If, if, if you've grown more than double what I had, I never let it go beyond uh, the, the full complement. So that's how you block these things. And that's what's happening. They're infiltrating. Guam was an easy target for all these people from, from Asia that are throwing uh, boxes and, yeah. and, and canisters of, of, of yeah, drugs sure. on our shores yeah. because they said there's nobody there to, to find out. Right. Uh, and, and as our time is, is winding down a little bit, you uh, are coming on, if you are getting elected, into the most important part of the rebuilding of Guam, which includes the military. And I cannot be ever standing up in public and be wishy-washy about my support for the build-up. We can't be a governor of Guam and one day you're angry at the federal government and say, I'm not for the build-up. And you know, if, if they look at you as not being serious about what you do and then being childish about it, being puerile, then you've got to be able to, to have somebody like me stand up and have that same relationship I had back then with all the military, Navy, Air Force, everywhere. I mean, when we had Typhoon Parker hit and then suddenly the president of the United States, Bill Clinton, calls me up and tells me, I already called Anderson Air Force Base, they'll make all the C-5As available for you, we'll put all the trucks in California and bring them out here. It's the relationship that we build well, up. you had a good relationship with President Clinton. I don't know about Trump. Oh, but I know how to get to Trump. Just be <laughs> myself. Okay. I'm going to go there and, and, and let him understand that what the real story of Guam is. I'm a, I was a businessman, and I'm very conservative. You know, uh, I'm a dino. Some people say, yeah, you're a dino. That's a Democrat in name only. And I told the business community, you've, you've been electing somebody that puts your name under a Republican on the ballot, but they're rhinos. They're Republican in name only. Mm -hmm. They're the ones raising all your taxes and your fees. So stop it there. Vote for the guy that knows how to get it done with you guys helping me, and uh, we'll get it done. Governor Gutierrez, always a pleasure. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for having us uh, a part of your life uh, with coffee with the candidates. Until the next time, I'm yeah. Patty Arroyo. Thank you. Thank you.